Afternoon. Thank you so much. Oh, perfect. You've done that once or twice. Thanks. And how many of you already have tickets for the Repco about the 12 hour? Give us a raise of a hand and a yell. How many of you don't have a ticket to this Big Cats race? Well, you've got a good chance to change that here today. We've got a few trivia questions for you. Baby's got a handful of tickets here with you as well, so he'll leave it out mingling with the fans. And I'm going to go shout out some questions here and let him get the right answer. We'll get a couple of tickets to this race. First one, we'll start off with a little bit easy. Raise your hand if you don't know the answer. I want you to yell, yell something. I'm not going to ask the answer. But first one, the easiest one. Day one at Bathurst 12 hour. Just finished the signing with Rossi and uh, yeah, walk in and check out some of the other cars. Um, pretty excited for the E Transit van, the electric transit van, and of course the BMW cars. So we'll go and check those out along with everything else. Give another round of applause for Clancy's been doing a wonderful job for us here today. Thank you all again, everyone who's hanging out here. As you can see, the autograph line is just finishing up. For those of you who are still coming through, give a thank you to your drivers as you come by for uh, hanging around for us, sticking around a little bit. All the courses, all the
So I just got back to the car after the Tractor Town event. That sort of marks the start of my Bathurst 12 hour weekend. So yeah, I managed to get Rossi to sign my BMW merch hat, which is pretty cool. He's racing for their team this weekend. So yeah, now the plan is to head out to the Bathurst uh, Motor Museum, check out that, see if I can get in, or if the crowds are too big there, we might have to skip it. But I'm camping up on the top of the hill tonight and for the rest of the weekend. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. I'll take you throughout the rest of my day and see what we see at the Bathurst 12 hour. So that was a look at the Motor Racing Museum. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Now time to go and check into the campground where we're staying all the way up here on the top of the mountain, which will be awesome. So I'll try and show you as much as I can as I go up there and uh, what the process is like uh, for staying up on uh, the top at McPhillamy. So I was walking back to my car to go up the top of the hill all the way up there for my camping but I've spotted the Ford E Transit. So it's completely electric, basically just a space frame over the top of some batteries. So I'm pretty keen to see this out on the track tomorrow and on Saturday. But let's see if we can get a closer shot. They're just out doing all the uh, promo material, interviews, Photographers going at it. There it is, officially on uh, Main Street. Okay, once again, we're delaying this uh, this entry to the campsite. I've somehow walked straight into the early action where it's all happening tomorrow. So here's an early access before it opens on the Friday. I'll just do a sneaky little walkthrough show you some cars on display. We got Motive DVD over here unloading. Ooh. So this must be the demo where you uh, 
try and replace the tire the fastest as you can. I mean a wheel, sorry. And then you uh, go on the draw to win some goodies, tickets, all that stuff. I'll have to come back there. Oh, there's nothing there. So this is the Moto DVD car that you've seen in World Time Attack and all those good things. Yeah, so if you've been out to Sydney Motorsport Park, you would have seen this going around at World Time Attack. We'll, we'll move on, see what else there is. Afternoon. So it looks like you can grab all your merch, your little die-cast models along here. This will be the Ford electric area, where they'll be promoing all new EV vehicles they're delivering to Australia. And then you got food vendors up the back there, your Pizza Hut, Frozen Coke, all that, all that stuff you'd find at a race day. Lots of vendors selling die-cast models this year. More, way more than last year. And then, we're gonna walk right to the end and check out that helicopter right there. Considering it's an army tent, they'll probably try and sign me up at the same time. But yeah, more food vendors, food vendors all around us in this sort of zone. And then down the end there is the electric, Ford electric area. I will have to check that out because, you know, EV is the way of the future. It's just what the governments want and the technology is getting better day by day. That's why I'm so excited to see the demo of the transit van out, out on the track. This is pretty cool, so I don't think I'd get the same access tomorrow. I don't know. We get an early access right here, it's great. I don't know for sure if this is going out in a demo run, but we'll, we'll find out.
afternoon. So we'll walk back towards the Racing Motor Museum and uh, yeah, get in the car and we'll get up that mountain. But this has just been a quick preview of, uh, of where the fans get to hang out throughout, throughout the day. So now we're heading into the main pavilion that you'll see when you come in the front gate. And you can see they're still bringing cars in. Spin it around so you guys can see. seen a lot of Corvettes at the uh, 12 hour this year, way more than last year. Just a quick observation there. But yeah, we'll, we'll walk through this pavilion again in the morning when we check in. Yeah, so for now, I think this is officially the time I head up the mountain to McPhillamy. But, 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 who knows what we could find. I didn't think we'd get that behind the scenes access just there. So you just have to stay tuned. Come on for the ride, continue watching. The day's not over yet. So get back to the car, get up the top, let's go. All right, I've come across this map here. This is for the people that have never been to Mount Panorama or Bathurst before. So, when I say camping up the top, I mean right up in this, this location here, top left, where it says McPhillamy Park. So yeah, that's where we'll be staying just before they do the chicanes down to the back straight. Woohoo! We're through security. Um, fairly easy process. They just look around your car, check that you don't have any contraband. They check your fridge and uh, eskies, and then you're pretty much good to go. So now we've uh, gone through that checkpoint that you would have seen in the earlier clip, and we're heading up to our camp spot. Yes, yes, yes. So excited. So uh, up here till Monday morning. Pretty keen, pretty keen. So uh, off to our left here will be the racetrack. We're sort of uh, going, scooting around the outside of it. Um, yeah, they don't let you drive up the track even though you norm normally would when it's not a race meet, but they're doing promo shoots and stuff like that today. So we're just heading up this uh, side access road. Um, and another thing about the security checkpoint, if you're camping up here, they'll give you a wristband and scan, scan your GA ticket. And then you keep that wristband for the whole weekend and just wave it uh, if you want to go down to pit lane, uh, which I'll be doing tomorrow for my pit lane walk and checking out all those good things that we saw in that little preview. So yeah, we'll get up the top, we'll set up camp, crack a beer and see if we can walk a little bit of the track. Check in soon. All right, I've checked into the camping and I've made it up onto the track. We're right at Brock's skyline. Infamous drop to the asses.
I don't know if I got that on camera at all, but that was, that was freaking low. Out there, they're doing a Red Bull Air show. I think they're doing a few practice runs actually before the official event kicks off. But as you can see, all the workers are still out here steadying up, so you do have to be careful if you're doing this sort of stuff. It's not 100% not sanctioned by the event. So yeah, use extreme caution if you're doing it. Sometimes when they're in a battle coming into this section, they will use this as a runoff, but that can incur a couple of uh, penalty seconds to them, depending on the situation. So you've got Brock's skyline straight over the top, down and around, and then you start those S's down to the back straight. So right down there, that's pit lane, track goes down the side there, around pit lane, all the way up and around. So during race day you can't get onto this boardwalk, it's kind of out of limits for spectating. But you will see the broadcast TV team walking up and down this track to get to their camera points. So yeah, not sure how well this comes up on camera, but over there is the straight, the back straight. Bit of an S dog leg over there. And then pit, pit lane and main straight. All right, let's cut back up to the track because I'll spin this around for you. But if you continue straight ahead down there, you don't, don't really see much. You want to see the track. This is what it looks like when they come down. Obviously with a lot more speed. And there you go. So I'll make my way back up and actually get the swag set up, get a bit of food going, a couple of drinks, call it a day. But yeah, like seriously, coming up this is brutal. It is like, the camera won't show it, but this is a serious bit of incline up here. And to think that the drivers come into it like easy over 100, 100 Ks, just straight up and over into blind bends, like, yeah, they've driven the track like a million times on sims and, you know, in real life. But shit, you don't, you don't feel the steepness until you're actually here and experience it. Man. Still blows my mind every time. I've been here lots. I came here last year for the 12 hour, but man, this steepness. Wow, every time. Just over there as well, is that infamous Mount Panorama gravel sign. You can see all the way from down in the Bathurst Township.
All right, we've got back onto the track. It's much more interesting than the boardwalk. So even just here, just standing here, that perspective, you can't see the turns up the hill. It's insane. See if we can cut on that side. And I'll show you from a spectator's point of view. All right, so I've gone over a couple of fences here to bring you onto the spectator's side. It's bloody warm though, that's for sure. Definitely going to need to crack out the sunscreen and the head skins. But yeah, this is from the spectator's point of view. Looking straight down for those S's we just walked. So yeah, I'll check in again when we're at the campsite. Just having an afternoon walk throughout the uh, McPhillamy campground. Show you a bit about it and what's around. So yeah, I'll spin you guys around and show you show you all about it. So as you can see, every space is mapped out, white lines all the way around, showing your allotted allocation that you paid for when, when you rushed on to book. And something I've just noticed is there's a lot more caravans than I anticipated. But I'm in the trusty old crash pad swagging myself. Yeah, so as you can see again, every spot mapped out by white lines, showing your eight by eight allocation. Something that I'm keen to check out is this is a sim rig in pay to race. Might have to try that one afternoon. But yeah, some people have got some Big setups going. Like, look at this tent right here. A couple of tents wedged together to make a super dome. And then you have these little access roads, and everything's just spray painted on the ground. So, you got to follow the uh, McPhillamy campground map, find your street and then find the number that you booked. And the number will look like this. So here's 1,165, spray painted on the ground. Then you look for your white lines. That shows you the size of your campground. Make sure you're on the right one. If you're camping up at McPhillamy, there's a bit of a playground for the kids, which is good. Good for the families. Let's head back out towards the track again. I've sort of got camp half set up, so it's all right. It's all right. However, however, lounge, fuck lounge. So as you can see, everyone gets their gazebo structures up nice and early. This is the Thursday before the racing even starts on Friday. And you know, trying to bring gazebo, it's just already gone. Uh, camping opened yesterday on Wednesday at 9am, so possibly these all these spots were, were taken up yesterday, I don't know, but anyway I've arrived today on, th on Thursday before all the action on Friday, you've seen my journey here, all the things I've done, it's cut up under a structure. Like, 
look at that view. <laughs> this is so good. So coming down to the Skyline Bend, you've got a big gravel sand trap. A few cars have used it in the past years, unfortunately. And then straight ahead where you see that thrifty sign, that's Brock Skyline where I showed you earlier and we walked down the hill towards the S's. So let's actually walk in the other direction this time. While I enjoy my Asahi beer, I'll give you some, give you another tour. All right. So we're walking up in the other direction this time. So they do have food options at the top of the hill. I'm unsure of what the prices are though. Just pizzas, kebabs, that sort of stuff normally. You know, it's good to see that they've got gluten-free options. I know a few people that, you know, they must have gluten-free, so that, that's good to see out of a food truck. Then you got the Ned's Bar. And this whole little area in here is private for the people who are buying drinks at the bar and food from here. So on race days, packed with patrons for there. Anybody with a GA ticket can come, but you just have to buy a drink to be in this, this sort of area. Hey, and you can see that people are still setting up. Racing starts tomorrow, like I've mentioned before. But yeah, gazebo tents, they just keep going. So if, you, if you're gonna rock up on Friday and think you're gonna get a gazebo right near the side of the track, that, that's not happening. Cutting back out onto the track. This is the sand gravel trap I was talking about before. Actually, I'll walk onto it and show you, show you what it was like. It's almost like a, it's almost like a kitty litter sand base. It's actually bloody effective at stopping cars. I'm not going to walk on that. It's just too dusty and trying to stay clean for the remaining days. But yeah. That stuff is effective. All right, so this is the track. That way with the thrifty sign, Brock skyline. So we'll cut, cut back across. I'll show you uh, the other side of the track today, the, the inner inside. Um, that's sort of an area you can't get to once, uh, once race day is officially on. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the 12 hour. But when it's not a race meet, public road, public two-way road. So, you know, bring your car up here. Amrock's done several laps itself, which is always epic fun. Unfortunately, you can't rip it. It's only 60 kilometers speed limit and there's cameras and cops regularly patrol. So just keep that in mind if you're doing some happy laps yourself. But yeah. Got picnic tables along here on the inner side. These are the big screen trucks. So they'll be broadcasting the tele live feed. So there's not much in here. Yeah, so the tele Telebroadcast will be out there. And we'll keep walking along. And in the far distance there, you might be able to see, all the way up there. I believe that's Reed and Sulman Campground. Yeah, Reed and Sulman Campground. So, I'm all the way back up there. You can probably see the play equipment pretty much somewhere there. That's, uh, that's McPhillamy that I've booked. Probably my favorite part of the track up there. But you come down, this is the Reed and Sulman camping. So we'll just mosey on down here. 
Show you, show you what it's like. Lots of you following me have probably been to Bathurst before, but you know, I'm sure there's lots of you that haven't. So we're gonna cut on the far side of the uh, barrier here, get on the track side and have a good look around. Yeah, you can see those gazebo tents just lining up along there. Afternoon. Yeah, so they actually spray paint along on the ground, a white line denoting the furthest you can put your gazebo to, to the track. So that's why they're all nicely in a big long line. People have chosen to take the top off so it doesn't lift off in the wind. There is a bit of wind up here. So yeah, it doesn't lift off. And then in front of those gazebos, people would just jam pack it with chairs. Man, it's insane. It's insane, these ripple strips are insane. Like, I don't know how well this is coming up on camera, but there is some serious height to it. And they're not particularly smooth. To think that they hit them at 100 plus, it's pretty wild actually. I have been up on them in the Amrock along here. They're not that smooth. So 12 hour this year is a part of the part of the GT challenge. So several rounds of endurance racing throughout the world. It's pretty good. I, I watch uh, all of it actually. It's really really good racing. Follow BMW for the whole year. Yeah, so you can see. And just behind all those gazebos up on the hill, camping. And then you got the view along here, between the trees. Here's a worker coming down the track for an example of how they might race. Obviously not the racing line, but gives you an idea of what it's like. So we'll make our way back to uh, McPhillamy, see what action's happening out there. Bloody warm day though, that's for sure. Saturday and Sunday, they're gonna, they're gonna roast me if we don't get the sunscreen and head skins on. And plenty of water in me, not just beers. <laughs> this part's actually pretty cool. So they're hugging it tight with that uh, ripple strip that I showed you back there. And they get freaking close to this wall. And this is the infamous spot where a lot of them lose side mirrors. And they brush off here. So I doubt this wall will be as fresh by the time Sunday comes. But yeah, they get as close as they can to the wall here. So they can set up for the uh, next left-hander and out to Brock Skyline. All right, we got another car coming. Another service vehicle by the looks of it. I mean, they're the sort of only vehicles that are allowed up here with the roadblocks and all. Um, I would have driven the Amarok straight up the track if I was allowed, but you've got to take that side road with the security check-in and all those bits that I showed you earlier. But yeah, this is pretty much it. Might call it end of the day here. Might show you a clip on my campsite once I get a bit more set up. Tonight's going to be the basic setup, just the swag and awning. 
tomorrow night I'll peg it up for a bit more because I'm planning not to move my car for the next couple of days after that. Here you go, another service vehicle coming through. So yeah, anyway guys, stay tuned. Day one officially done. Official day one tomorrow, my day two of Bathurst 12 hour. Stay tuned. Catch you guys later.